Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Ward, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day at Ord, O-R-D hyphen Oracle dot com. That's Ord hyphen Oracle dot com. Tim Ord, pretty wild day starting off September. Yeah, it's 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 kind of it's kind of a lot of cross currents here. Um, let's look at chart one. Let's look at the short term pattern. Okay, and I have it up. We're up uh, over the last couple of weeks. We're we're up holding against the previous highs of July sixteenth, but we never touched that high. And on Friday, um, if you look at the volume chart, we really had high volume showing kind of like energy going to bust through that high. And yes. today we gap down, leave uh, we gap down, and leave an open gap. So, and if you look at the bottom window, you know the first part of uh, actually mid August, you know the S and P's were making higher highs, and the uh, uh, SPX VIX ratio is making a lower high. So that was a bearish divergence, suggesting hey, we're making right. a high, uh, some sort of a high. But over the last uh, week or so. The SPs made a higher high, and that ratio made a higher high. Uh, so I didn't really get a, a signal of any consequence. I thought we'd get a pullback, but I'm not really trusting it here. There's a gap around that 545 on the SPY, and uh, obviously we may try for that. We're not very far from it. But yeah, I don't see any top of uh, consequence. You know, high volume highs, just like almost high. Uh, and yeah, high volume highs almost always tested. So if we pull back here, which we are, we may test that gap below us at 545 and go right back up and test the gap that was formed today. So I think it's just more of a trading range. I don't think, you so know, you anything. Think, so you don't think we're going to uh, go after uh, the high volume low that we have? I mean today? No, I mean, you're saying you're looking at the gap at 545, but the high volume low on the SPY is 523 to 510. Oh, that one way. Well, I don't think we're going to go there uh, just because I don't think we have that much berry stuff in the market. I don't think okay. uh, at Let's one point I thought, yeah, we'll go, uh, we'll go back down there. But, you know, you ever look at gaps, depends where they form. And a lot of breakaway gaps coming off of bottoms yes. don't get filled. Okay. And uh, uh, But the middle gaps and the gaps after the breakaway gaps, a lot of those do get filled. But if you I ever see. go back and do a study, and you see a breakaway gap off of the bottom, everybody right. waits, well, let's, let's wait for the pullback to that gap. Well, it never happens. They, that gap just stays open forever. And a lot of these bull markets stop off, uh, you know, start off with a breakaway gap. So, right. you know, 520 could get hit. Or, yeah, so, you know, I, I get it. You look, you look at the gap in the middle. I can gap. see the gap, the gap in the middle. I can see that. Cool. Okay. Yep. So, but, yeah, the, the, so I'm thinking that's a breakaway gap. Let's flip the chart uh, two here. Okay. I have it. Uh, yeah, the, we, we've gone over this before. Back on July 10th, um, I'm kind of just pointing out some things that you got to really keep in mind. I thought at one point we were going to look like, uh, you know, the top window is the uh, daily RSI for the uh, SPYs. And if you hit between 80 to 85, that's never the final high. If it gets above 85, a lot of times that's an exhaust move to the upside, and that's okay. a meaningful top. So you get up around 90 on the RSI, it's going into a blow-off top. But it stays below 80, you know, between 80 and 85. That's you can get consolidation, but ultimately you'll so you'll pull back or maybe just build a sideways range, and ultimately you start breaking higher highs again. And that's what we had on July 10th. The market did go back up. Now we're pretty close to the previous highs of July. We're in that vicinity, and I'm I'm thinking we're not going to do what we at one point I have that two boxes there. Red yes. boxes on the SPYs. Yes. Uh, yeah, if you look in the, the 2021, I, see them. Yep, I thought we yep. might do something like that. Um, I don't think we're going to do that. I think the worst case scenario now is we fill the gap at 545, and I bet it finds support. Um, the trend is not blowing out yet. The, uh, well, it the, is. It's as, as we're talking, we're at 1.22 right now, which is pretty good. And okay. we got 800 down tick readings. 
so we're already getting panic right off of the top. And normally, uh, you know, the tops, everybody thinks, well, this is a pullback. You don't get panic until you get close to the low. But the panic's right off of the top on the trend. A lot of times, you know, they're, they're short-lived. So I, I'm thinking the worst-case scenario is 545. I bet we find support, and I bet I end up with a buy signal. Uh, hey, so let, let me ask you but, this. You know, there's about, a lot of things between now and then, but um, sure. I'm leaving more yeah, bullish but, here than bearish. I'll put it that way. So, okay. Let me ask we'll, you this. You know, we know the Dow hit the Dow hit a high on Friday, right? The Dow yeah. the Dow also did 1.684 billion shares on Friday. Yeah. Yeah, well, it was kind of like what the S and P's did. You know, if you look at the S P's or S P Y's, there, look at that big chunk of volume. You know, it is, it's you know it's about almost a hundred percent higher than the previous days before it. So, right, right. I, I'm thinking um, that wasn't a blow off, especially as it's going into a three day holiday. Volume's supposed to be anemic. Yeah, so exactly. It's, it's a little bit of a. T- you know, it's a little bit of a twist here. Is what's going on? So, so yeah, I see that one <laughs> kind of come in on the close. I'm thinking, yeah, maybe we're going to bust above the July high, turns around, and you know, we bust below. Uh, right. We were busting down a little bit, and today's volume is, uh, you know, may, it may not even match Friday's volume. So, no, it doesn't look like I it's don't going, know. Which, it's, uh, which is intriguing. I know what you're saying, man. There's no doubt. Yeah, especially yeah, in the it's a little bit. I mean, it's yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's, I'm glad I'm not either long or short. I think, you know, right. they, they caught the, the longs on Friday, and they may catch the shorts this week. So, yes. So, I, I don't know. Like, a lot of weird stuff happens, you know, the, the summer doldrums and stuff back and forth. You sure. get these moves out of nowhere that just end as fast as they start. So, right. you know, I, I'm not really bearish here. But, and, you know, let's just go look at chart three. Okay. You know, I chart two says, you know, we're going to hit a new high, you know, new highs at some point. And chart three, this is kind of a repeat again, but you got to remember this uh, is a wag breath thrust indicator. When you get triggered, which we did uh, this year, we had uh, August 5th to August 19th, we had the, uh, the reading go from 0.4 to 0.62, which is basically 10 days, and that triggers a wag breath thrust indicator. Wag thrust indicators only show up in bull markets. So, uh, you know, you can have pullbacks, but they're, they're not going to be extended pullbacks. Sure. So, Stay right there a second, the Tim. We had a quick break. We're going to be coming right back. This is Tim Moore, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate your growling problem with us. Stay right there, folks. Tim and I are coming right back. The Dow's down 700. NASDAQ's up 593. S&P's are up 128. Tim and I are coming right back. Welcome back, folks. At uh, Tim or Tom O'Brien, we do appreciate your growl and a problem when it's out there. We have to now down, down, down to 745. Nasdaq's off 613. S&Ps are off 132. They're selling this thing down fast and furious. And if we actually take a look, you'll see the. Uh, uh, you talk about a trip, Tim. I mean, the, the VIX is going right through the moon now and has been since we've been on. Uh, bottom line is that we just went from like uh, 17 to 20. So pretty intense. So we're on yeah. chart three right now, Tim. Yes, let's flip back to chart one again. There's, okay. there's a, you know, there's there's different, uh, there's different indicators, I guess you might say, to find out where panic is, and VIX yes. is one of them. And if you measure the velocity of the VIX, put an RSI with it, and compare yes. that RSI with other bottoms and stuff, because VIX. You know, acceleration of the VIX is actually showing panic. Right. And so if the VIX gradually goes up, you know, you're not really panic, but if VIX really shoots up fast, that's the panic everybody's trying to get to the door. It's kind of like the trend, you know, getting 1.2 or higher. And yes. so uh, the acceleration of VIX is another form of panic. <laughs> and, and on top of that, uh, we're down uh, uh, 2.3 or thereabouts on uh, today's decline. And there's another uh, axiom out there that 2% declines come in clusters. So, okay. so if you see one, at some point you're gonna see another one. So yeah, and, and what that Tim's says to me folks, is, that, you know, yeah. uh, it, 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 it's, it's gonna be a kind of a difficult market. So right. if the market rallies from here, it may come back down again one more time. So, but I'm not really, 
you know, Barry, I really didn't get a, uh, a decent type signal on this last uh, high. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking we're not. I think it's just, this is going to just sh- shake the tree a lot, and uh, you know, as far as a, a, a trend goes up or down, I think we're, we're not going to. I don't think we're going to go all the way down to five twenty. I think we're going to find support in that five forty five, and we may hit it. Okay rally off of it and come back down to it. And the reason why I say that because two percent two percent declines come in clusters. So I'm with you, yeah. And then, well, a, you, get the, a, you get the NDX down three point four, which is pretty intense. <laughs> yeah, it kind of reinforces that idea. So, yeah. so I don't know. I'm, I'm not. I don't know. I'm not chasing the decline, but right. I, I don't see uh, the bigger. Put it this way: if you bought here, you have some pain. But ultimately, you'll break the new highs. So maybe this is this what the market's setting up to do to, you know, they shake the tree hard enough, get everybody on sure. the wrong side of the fence. Then out of nowhere, the rally starts. And I think that's probably what's starting to form here. Cool. But in a nutshell, I'm bullish here at term on a short term basis. Eh, tough call. So, right. but I, but again, I really didn't get a, a sell signal at this uh, last high. Uh, not saying I get you know catch all highs. I don't. No, but, I'm with you. Uh, I didn't well, really. We had we had that divergence. Real that divergence there. was basically you know basically the 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 VIX TLT ratio was given you know was given a signal was given a, and that seems to be pretty accurate. Right. Which one was that? Your your ratio the 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 you oh the SPY VIX ratio. Yeah. No, the SPY uh, TLT ratio. Uh, 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 the bond ratio. Oh, the TLT. Yep, yep. Yeah, bond ratio. Right. Yeah. Well, I didn't yeah. quite get to uh, the RSI. Didn't quite get to seventy on that last uh, rise there. I get looked like about sixty nine or so. That that yeah. uh, the SPX uh, tilt ratio works really good at bottoms, and it, it, it does pick out tops. But sometimes they're just short term tops. So yes. But but bottoms they, they usually pick out most of them. So. Yes. I don't know. We want to move on? Yes, I'm on chart four now. Yeah, chart four. Here's this is um kind of just it's a, it's a trend indicator. Uh even though we're we're down three point six five percent, that's kinda of, it's almost the norm anymore for the GDX. It's up down just a bunch of percent. But I, I took this earlier today, it's updated okay. to uh, current time. The bottom window is the uh, GDX uh, 50 day average of the up down volume. So it basically is, is, it's a trend falling type indicator and follows the up and down volume, which pretty much matches what uh, the GDX has done. And we're up around uh, plus, you know, close to plus 10 when I took this. So it wasn't even close to zero. As long as it holds above uh, zero on this indicator, there's an 18 day average that has to hold above minus 10. But the 50-day average has to hold above zero. We came in about plus 10 uh, earlier today. So even whatsoever going on here, I think it's just chop. Um, so as far as the trend indicator, as long as this thing stays above zero, uh, which is got, I think it got about above zero, I think, end of March, 1st of April, and pretty much stayed above zero. So it's been, a, you know, what, four months now, five months, four months? Yeah, yes. five months, whatever. So, so far as this indicator is not showing any weakness yet, per se. Um, uh, go to chart number five. That's okay, I have it. Um, yeah, chart number five. Uh, this is uh, kind of a good indicator to pick out the intermediate terms because in longer term uptrends, which I think are, we are, and I'll show you that chart after chart for number five. Is this pretty good chart to pick out the intermediate term? And in the middle window is the weekly HUI gold ratio, and it gets pretty close to the tops and bottoms intermediate term. Which the indicator gets RSI of this weekly ratio gets below uh, thirty, usually at a low. This happened back in October of last year at the market, but when it gets above seventy. Uh, RSI for this ratio, usually at an intermediate term high. And all those red arrows in the past, I've marked it. We're coming in about plus 60, a little less than plus 50 or 59 right now. So, uh, momentum to the upside as far as this 
uh, HUI gold ratio on a weekly time frame hasn't reached euphoria yet. So this has probably got um, this stuff in a, at least on GDX today. Uh, to me, it's not worrisome. I'll put it that way. I think the uptrend is okay. still intact. Um, it's nothing significant to worry about. But chart chart number six. Okay. This is a chart that once it gives a signal, it stays on a signal for at least a year. The average or the shortest dural relation on here is a year and a half, and most of them uh, can do more than that. Matter of fact, the last time we gave a signal was like January 2021, and it flipped to a buy signal here in, in June of this year. So it may stay on a buy signal until late. 2025, but you may have some intermediate term sell signals in between there, and that's the reason why I brought up the uh, weekly RSI on the HUI gold index. It may give a sell signal maybe in, I don't know, November, December of this year, and that sell signal may do, you know, last until February, April of next year. Uh, but the bigger trend remains up as long as those two indicators on the bottom remain above the mid Bollinger band. Uh, the uptrend uh, should continue, and so bigger trend still up. So uh, nice. short-term trend still looks fine. A beautiful thing. Well, listen, man, we appreciate the education. We look forward to having you on Thursday. All right. Thank you, great guys. Night, Tim. Have a safe Talk one. To you then. Thank you so much. Right. Dow Dow's down 740. Nasdaq's off 615. S&P's off 132. Come right back, folks. 